And TalkSport understands that Bournemouth are close to being taken over by a Las Vegas-based consortium. Our reporter Alex Crook provided this update this morning. It looks like it, it will happen. We know that uh, Maxim Demin has hired a, a firm in America to try and find potential new owners for the Cherries. Those, those new owners seem to be in the form of a mystery Las Vegas-based consortium. I think it's exciting um, for Bournemouth. I know there's maybe a, a bit of concern from people like Gary Neville about the number of clubs now that have come under um, American ownership. But by all accounts, there's plans if it goes ahead to improve the training ground, to improve the stadium, to provide funds for whoever the manager is. And obviously Gary O'Neill at the moment is an interim charge come January and I think Maxim Demin um, the Russian owner who has British citizenship can go out with his head held high this was a club when he took over that were languishing in League One they were a long long way from being the Premier League the fact they've been promoted to the Premier League twice on his watch I think is an incredible legacy but probably the time is right now for a change at the top and I think Bournemouth fans can be quietly optimistic for the future assuming Mm -hmm. this does go ahead Okay, so change at the top and we're still waiting to find out what's going to happen management-wise with Bournemouth. And Sean Dyche has been asked if he'd be interested in the vacant Bournemouth job since Scott Parker was sacked. He said this, there's nothing that I wouldn't look at because in my career I didn't play in the Premier League but played loads of cup games against Premier League clubs and I played in all the other divisions. I manage in the Championship, the Premier League as well. I would never, he says, disrespect any club. So... Sean Dyche to Bournemouth. Would that be a good fit, Cass? Well, a lot comes down to the owners now, doesn't it? What type of owners? <clears throat> you know, we've seen a lot of investment, especially across from America, where where they have a particular blueprint of how they see the football club to be run. And if that doesn't tick the box of Sean Dyche, we're seeing this more often, aren't we, within the game, that owners want different type of things. I mean, Todd Bowley turned up at Chelsea and... Didn't take a lot, and you could argue, well, Chelsea's having a great end of the season, but they had an idea about the new manager very, very quickly with different ideas. So I think predicting managers and, you know, getting jobs is nearly impossible now. Cass, don't don't you think that Bournemouth have to think a little bit different solely because if the worst was to happen, you need a manager in who knows the terrain of the championship as well. Mm -hmm. Not only can he keep them up, but if they were to go down... You know, he's got to know his way around that championship because, you know, that, that championship is, is hard. If you get in there, it's hard to get out of. Well, he gets a, uh, a hard ride, I think, Sean Dyche, because his achievements of keeping Burnley in the Premier League were pretty extraordinary with not one of the biggest budgets. Um, Bournemouth, likewise. I mean, I, I mean, you, you look now, you think what Eddie Howe achieved with Bournemouth was pretty extraordinary. Year after year, keeping them as a Premier League team with a stadium that holds 10,000 people. And, you know, they can't compete with the revenue of the major clubs in the Premier League. So it's a tricky one. And, you know, like Kevin says, I don't rule out anybody. I think football and always have considered football being there's many ways to win. There's not only one way you have to play. I do think the game, the laws have changed. And we've had this conversation that where attacking football pays much more dividends than it used to because the laws are for the of uh, adventurous team. Side, yeah. yeah, the offensive team. So it's it's something that I think a lot of people who they, they all do stats and numbers now, don't they? <laughs> yeah. The model of your Brentford and Brian. And, and many other clubs that, that have been successful, that they, they look at this these ideas. Well, within this interview that, that Sean Dyche has had where he's talked about the possibility of, you know, at least discussing the Bournemouth job, he says, what is hard for a manager is when you get told you've got to manage this and then a month later this comes along, uh, the goalposts keep changing and different mm. figures appear and you're like, well, what, what was the structure that we agreed on? And so he's basically saying there, you know, if you're going, if I'm going to go into a job, I want everything outlined to me straight away. So he's even gone on to say, look, if there's no money, tell me there's no money, I can work with that. Now, would he want to go into a club that possibly is going to be taken over by another uh, another ownership group or at least investing mm-hmm. from another uh, group that, that could alter how Bournemouth are run? Is that something that he would want well, to do? I'll, 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 let Kevin, I'll just say one word on this because Kevin will probably echo this. I... I know for sure that lots of managers have been lied to along the way (laughs) about what's expected, the demands, and then the goalposts move. And I think that's pretty fair, isn't it? That's that's normal. That's standard. I think Sean Dyche would welcome the new ownership if he gets funds. You're talking about a manager who's done really well in the Premier League, who's got teams through certain tribulations and done well. But to have money 
Mm. To, to be able to, you need money. To you be able to money. go into the marketplace mm. in January and actually really make a difference, that that was never afforded to Sean Dyche at mm. Burnley. So I think it would be something he would welcome. Mm. Yeah. And look, look, you to be competitive, you have to always have the opportunities of upgrading your players and buy the best available and pay. You know, Burnley weren't bad at paying, as far as I know. That financially, in actual salaries, they were good. They just never went big in the transfer market for thirty million pound player. They just were never able to do that. Well. We don't know what's happening with Bournemouth. Gary O'Neill, though, might have something to say about it. And bear in mind, I think they've, what, picked up uh, four points from the yeah, last two games? The so, three at uh, Forest was pretty spectacular. Yeah, exactly wasn't that. It? Exactly that. So um, we wait to see what will happen with Bournemouth. But as soon as we know any more, if they make a managerial appointment uh, anytime soon, we'll let you know. And uh, Bournemouth's next game is at St. James's Park, Newcastle Bournemouth, one of five live and exclusive commentaries on Talksport this weekend. The game is on Talksport 2 tomorrow. From three o'clock. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, six till ten on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.